Hi everybody, welcome back once again to the Eastfield Gun Room YouTube channel. Now, we're going to look at a gun today we haven't looked at before. We've looked at a variation of the platform, which was the 694. In fact, we've done two. We've done the 694 Trap DTL and the 694 Sporting, so do check them out. But today we're going to have a look at the 690 Sporter. But as we don't do things by halves here, it's for a gun room. It's a limited edition. And not only that, it's the very last one that rolled off the production line. How about that? Beretta, back in 2014, launched the 690. And what the 690 was, it was a wider action profile than the 680, i.e. as in the Silver Pigeons, the 687 WLL, etc. And what it did is actually improve the handling of the gun. It felt a completely different gun. The 680 has always been built kind of to a price, whereas the 690, they looked at it much more from a handling point of view. Like I said, with the wider profile action, it increased the surface area between the hands and that improved the balance and the feel of the shotgun. So initially it was available in the black and orange, which at the time was completely off the wall. Black action with orange decals, that was the 691, what it was essentially called before they called it the 690 Black Sporter. And then as you moved up, they did the 693, which was initially a 690-111, as in three. This was made in a game and a sporting variant. And what it did is it offered something for everybody, whether they wanted to shoot game, whether they wanted to shoot sporting, or whether they wanted to shoot both, particularly if you didn't like that black action gun which with the orange, which you probably wouldn't take on a clay shoot. So what I've got here is we've got a 693 Deluxe Sporter. We start off, as always, with the action. If you look at it, it looks typically Beretta, where the barrel wings come into the action. You've got the hinge discs, which, of course, is the where the, the barrels hinge on. It has got that kind of sense of being a, a higher-grade gun than something like a basic silver pigeon, regardless of the aesthetic, overall aesthetics of the wood and the engraving. When you look at it, just having that wider profile, it's just got more of a presence, that's my opinion. So what we've got here, we've got some nice little game scenes with partridge and pheasant, some scroll work going around the hinge disc. You've got the, the Beretta logo there, as you would have with a, with a silver pigeon. When you turn it over, a bit more engraving on the bottom of the action, you've got the Beretta Trident logo there. And this is quite a nice touch because look at Berettas from yesteryear, like the 682 Supersport, etc. We've done a video on, do check that out. You should get a trigger guard where it said sporting guard. It wouldn't say feel, but it would say sporting or trap. And what they've done is they've kind of gone full circle. And here you've got on the front of the trigger guard, you've got Beretta Sport, which is quite a nice touch. And on the field version of these, guess what they said? It said field, naturally. A nice little touch. Again, not a nickel finish on this gun. I don't believe it's the Nistan like on the 694. It's kind of a, a semi-satin finish that, like I said, it's, it's not the nickel and it's not the Nistan. But it's a nice kind of coin finish that's not over the top. It's not glary etc etc you've got a, a polished trigger and like i said if we look on this side of the engraving we have got partridges some trees in the background and it, it looks a little bit like um the old silver pigeon 3 so it's kind of got that mid-range look and that mid-range feel about it so in the action is where it all kind of changes like i said it's a wider profile than the 680 which just completely transformed the handling of it if you pick up a silver pigeon 1 with the greatest respect to the Beretta um, manufacturing process, they're built to a price, and you compare it to this or a 690 Black, the difference is massive. You can just feel, it just feels a better gun, and it's a much, much nicer handling gun. You may notice from the previous 690 platform video, i.e. the 694, that the ejector system is slightly different. So with the 694, you have got the little... Um, knobbly bits that go in the ejector which can be removed with a magnet because they're magnetized great idea for cleaning of course this is pre then this is 2015 2016 this gun was manufactured so although you've got the engine turning so the aesthetics of it are nice although that it's slightly bigger engine turning um the ejectors aren't quite as simple to remove and they're a bit more like the standard 680 whereby you kind of push and twist case in point with that is the way the ejectors work they had these cams in the fore end which we'll move on to shortly, which weren't the best design in the world. So just if you are getting hold of one of these guns, just double check the cams in the forehead because they were prone to breaking. I like to tell it as it is on this channel. You know, if I know there's been a fault with a gun in terms of its manufacturing life, then I will happily share that with you. 30 inch barrels. 
Optima HP chokes superior steel shock proof. 10 by 8 sporting rib. It's standard Beretta gear. It works. It works so, so, so well. And like I said, with this kind of increased profile of the action, the gun just feels 10 times better than the equivalent Silver Pigeon. So, so based on that, if you were, you know, from a recommendation point of view, if you were looking to get into the sport, now one gun in particular that's kind of fallen out of favour a little bit since the introduction of the 694 is the 692. Still a great, great gun. I would always urge people to look at something like a huge 692 over a new Silver Pigeon 1 680 series because it's just a better gun and it will probably cost you a similar amount of money. So the barrel weight on this particular gun is 1470, 1.47 kilos. Now for people that watch the channel regularly and look at the barrel weights when I make comparisons, you will understand that's probably about right for a 30 inch Beretta Sporter. Um, you would look at probably 80 to 100 grams more had it been 32 inch barrels. Flush fit Optima HP chokes with this one was standard. You could of course get extended ones to put in should you wish, no problem at all. But this was a sporting gun supplied with standard flush fit Optima HPs as was the field version. The main difference between the field version of course is the weight which meant you had a narrower rib, non-ventilated barrels and a slimmer stock. Um, but we, what we are going to look at the difference between field and sporting guns on a future video. Now, like I said, this is quite a special gun. Now, this was made as a limited edition specifically for the UK market. Now, for those that don't know, the UK imports of Beretta have been for 40 plus years. It's a company called GMK, previously known as Gunmark, which is down in Southampton. And so what they tend to do is when they have a limited edition gun to kind of uh, identify it as a limited edition gun. They use these significant serial numbers, shall we say. Now, this one here is GMK00150. Well, what does that mean, I hear you ask? Well, what it basically means is this gun in this exact specification was um, produced for GMK by Beretta. They made 75 field guns in 12 gauge and they made 75 sporters. 75 and 75 is 150. This is 150. This is the last one. So what we've essentially got here is a little piece of Beretta gun making history. So you have this gun on the scales and it comes out at £7.12 ounces, which is crazy really because if you had a Silver Pigeon, which is a 680 series platform gun, uh, same specification, 30 inch, 10 by 8 rib, etc. It probably weighs exactly the same. The difference is in the weight distribution, which ultimately comes down to the balance. So in terms of the balance, put that on the hinge pin and it's absolutely spot on. The Silver Pigeon, I would expect, would be barrel heavy. For £7.12, ounces, what that does mean is it's a great crossover gun. You could use it for game shooting. It wouldn't be too heavy to walk up with. You could stand on a peg with it. You could shoot some sporting with it. Uh, arguably, it's too light to shoot trap, but ultimately, it doesn't lend itself to that because it doesn't have the stock profile. Having said that, a bit of skeet shooting, nice and light in the barrels, quick moving absolutely no problem whatsoever so it is very very much an all-rounder whereas the game version of it being five six ounces lighter would probably certainly lend itself better to an out and out game shooting application for those who have got a 693 or a 693 which is what it was called later on in life you're probably thinking well what's the difference okay well the, the main difference in making this a limited edition gun is in the grade of the wood so what happened is with a 693 or 69111, you would essentially get grade 2.5 wood, as you would on a 686E Evo or a 690 Black or a 692. What they did for this limited edition is they pulled out all the stops and they chucked class 3, which is 687 double E double L woodwork on it. And to that, they added a silver oval. So what you essentially got is you got the mechanics of the 690, which was very nice to shoot because of the length of the forcing cones, very smooth, good handling, but you've got it completely elevated to the next level in terms of the aesthetics of it. I mean, if you look there, that is an absolutely stunning piece of dark European walnut, very, very nicely figured, no issues through the head, so it's a nice, strong piece of wood. Yes, it has benefited from an aftermarket oil finish. It's not the factory finish, but it just absolutely stands out and is a, a really, really impressive piece of wood. I probably didn't say that as enthusiastic enough. It's a really, really nice looking piece of wood that is, okay? Really, really well figured. Nice flowing grain. 
like so you've got the silver oval and you've got the micro core recoil pad in addition alongside what you'd get with a 694 and a dt11 this stock is also pre-drilled for the b fast balancing system so you can get it exactly how you want for argument's sake if you wanted a stock heavy gun you could put a little bit more weight in the back end standard dimensions 35 55 if you've got a slightly older one in the 690 range you might have 36 56 but what's the difference in one miller drop it's a few minutes pies at christmas okay on to the fore end schnabel a kind of a different style in terms of the mechanics of the fore end they did this kind of self-tightening thing um the actual fore end iron material itself I'm not a huge fan of it does feel a little bit plasticky but it seems to do the job it's nice that in the two tone so you've got this kind of blued finish with this um this, this brush finish coin finish like the action in the middle of the latch nice bit of engraving and again it it reminds me of a silver pigeon three it's absolutely mid-range this gun was actually quite a lot of money when it was new because the 693 was sat where it should have been price wise but as ever woodwork is expensive and if you start chucking expensive wood on guns it automatically and ultimately increases the price point interestingly the fore end very nicely matched to the stock you know this doesn't always happen with shotguns these are made to a particular price point as all shotguns are and ultimately until you spend a, you know an, a considerable amount of money only then do you get the stock and the fore end from the same tree as it were a uh, schnabel forend with a lip not an offensive lip i think it looks well i think it suits the gun and the checker in is very very similar to the dt11 where you've got this kind of curvy stuff again i think it suits the gun another point just from my personal experience of these guns is this was the first beretta i can ever recall where they started using different colors on the on the dots on the safety catch on the selector so prior to this you would have both of them in red and what they did with this gun and onwards is they changed it to red and white so the red was the barrel that would fire first because red obviously signifies danger as in fire so a very interesting gun because like i said it's a limited edition and it's the very very last one so if you're looking at getting a beretta i would absolutely recommend that you pick up swing about shoot if possible a gun that's built on a 690 platform so you've got 690 black 693 like this one they did a 691 which was dreadful because the engraving looked like the waves out of the old spice advert 692 because they are comparably different to a 680 and the only way to real really feel that is to pick them up and to feel it yourself a slight disappointment from my point of view is when i've seen limited edition guns by beretta in the past they've had like of an upgraded case sometimes you know a bit of extra leather on it a few extra graphics you remember the dt11 gold we reviewed it got that great big bright thing you needed with ray bands on to look at it this is sadly the standard blue beretta case now however i do know having sold many 693 deluxes previously that this is not the original case the original case actually had the the same blue lining with the beretta logo as a 693 i don't quite know what's happened to that but should you want one it should be fairly easy obtainable again inside you've got this uh standard industry foam and also we talk about it a lot on this channel about tightening your stock up making sure you're protecting your stock from cracking if you've got a beretta stock tool it can live in here so other than that you've got your chokes in your box a bit of oil a choke key a bit of bump about it and that is it it's a 693 deluxe owner beretta piece of history number 150 of 150 it's still shot proof it will last you a lifetime it feels really good it looks the part it's a head turning gun that will get a lot of looks and a lot of comments and that pretty much rounds it up if you've got any questions about this particular gun please get in touch contact me directly don't forget to check out the website if you've got any comments please feel free to comment below you might want my opinion on how a particular barrel length might affect your style of shooting more than happy to help you with that kind of thing don't forget to keep liking the videos please subscribe if you haven't already done so and i look forward to seeing you again on the next video